my man Richie. Richie Rich Rich. What's up, big dog? My guy Rich, folks. Uh, Rich, you are my main man from Grand Junction, Colorado, and you are looking to spend 50 G's. You got $50,000 that you'd like to invest in real estate. Now, uh, if there's other folk from uh, Grand Junction here uh, watching the show, maybe you guys are in other parts of the USA, you would know that it is very, 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 very impossible uh, to buy anything in that area for 50 G's. It's actually very difficult uh, in almost everywhere in the United States. But there are a few select markets where you can still uh, get started in the business with uh, relatively risk, not risk free, but like um, reasonable levels of risk, right? I mean, they're, they're like hardcore ghettos you can invest in in the USA uh, for less than that, but you're in the hardcore ghetto. And that comes with its own set of issues, right? As a matter of fact, Rich, uh, you had found two properties in the hardcore ghetto uh, of the Cleveland market, and I was like, yo, dog. No way, can't do it. No way, Jose, right? I want to get you into something safer, right? And that's what I got for you today, right? We're going to be in the Cleveland market, but in a more stable place about a half hour out, okay? And uh, your 50 grand, uh, that's going to be enough money you could take this deal down cash. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to analyze the property for you, Rich. Uh, I'm going to analyze it for you. I'm going to give you the numbers based on a cash purchase, but I'm also going to break it down further if you're able to finance. Now, I know your plan right now is to just pay cash because you're having an issue getting a loan. But uh, just because you can't get a loan today, Rich, does not mean you might not be able to get a loan two, three, four, five years down the road. You never know. So I'd like to give you all of that information, and we're going to do it right now. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, y'all. Welcome to the show. Your boy, Jay Wise, here. Letting y'all know my thoughts on this particular property, right? 1703 West Avenue, Elyria. Hit the market six days ago. It's being marketed horribly. That's good. I love that. Okay, here's the deal, folks. Elyria is about 30 minutes west of Cleveland, right? The Cleveland market, okay? Uh, Cleveland market is one of the few markets in the United States of America that you could still find properties in the $50,000 range, right? It's 2022, y'all. Housing is is up. Gas is up. Uh, labor costs are up. Interest rates are up. They're going even further up. So, you know, it's best to lock in that long-term debt sooner rather than later. Uh, you know, everything, right? Inflation, okay? Everything's expensive. So this is one of the few... Uh, markets in the USA, we could still take down reasonable properties. Now, this is not the Taj Mahal, okay? It is currently tenant occupied by a long tenant. Does it look sexy? No! Of course it doesn't. But again, this is a $50,000 investment. This is what you guys need to understand. If you're going to be investing in, like, you know, lower income areas, this is what you're going to get. Uh, but I do Oh, look at that. They even got a tent back there, right? No extra charge for the tent, y'all. But look at that. Check it out. They got a little four-wheeler action. Hells yeah, dude. Uh, side note, if you buy this house and we have to evict these tenants and they leave the four-wheeler, I'm going to take that shit. All right? That's mine. That's my four-wheeler. All right? I'm, I'm letting y'all know right now I'm keeping that damn four-wheeler. All right? So I don't want to hear nothing about it later. I told you. I'll let you know on the show. Anyway, right? So. This house, right? It's not amazing. It's not sexy. But that's what low-income investing looks like. It's not always going to be glamorous and classy. All the other shows out there you're probably watching. It's always planes, guys in suits, you know, this or that, right? We make fun of that kind of stuff here at Holton Wise TV quite often, right? Uh, but in reality, this is what it looks like when you're buying lower-income stuff, right? But in this particular market, uh, this is a neighborhood that I find to be very manageable, right? It's about half hour west of Cleveland, like I said. Uh, it's not ghetto by any means. As a matter of fact, to give you guys like a barometer of what I uh, mean and talk about and, and discuss in these various neighborhoods, I created the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods, right? I graded everything on an A to F scale, right? Because if you're watching the show and you're from Orange County, California, 
this might like be horrific to you. Uh, but if you're watching the show from somewhere else, uh, or you're on Zillow Realtor.com and you're looking at properties in certain areas, like perhaps East Cleveland, and you're like, what about this one? It must be cool. And I'm like, hell no, bro. That's fucking insane. You're going to get shot. Right? You don't really know the difference. That's what the guide is for. It's for you guys to, to be able to put a letter grade next to these cities, next to these neighborhoods, so you can understand the level of risk. This C grade, right? It's right in the middle. I think C grade. Uh, is the best of both worlds for long-term buy and hold investors. It's uh, where you get properties that are priced very well. You get high cap rates, high cash on cash returns, but the tenant base is very manageable. Holton Wise is very comfortable dealing with tenants uh, of this type, tenants in this type of asset class, uh, you know, tenants who are living like that, right? Uh, we can go higher risk, but I don't like to do that because I think it's very tough for out-of-state investors uh, to make money, right? So I've graded this as a C. Uh, if you continue to watch my content or you read that guide, you'll see what I mean when I say a C, right? Uh, we could probably pick up the same amount of rent in a similar house in an F-class neighborhood uh, for even less than 50K. You could probably pick it up for 20, but that's going to you know, be very hard to actually have money come home to you. Uh, because it's so risky, right? So C ain't going to be sexy, uh, but it's a nice little chug, 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 just chugging along, man. It's the little engine that could, right? Good cash flow. You get a good mix of Section 8 tenants, cash-paying tenants. Now, uh, at the top of the show, I said that this particular property is not being marketed well, and it's not, and I love that. That's what's going to help us get a good price, right? Two kinds of people can buy houses like this. Investors who want cash flow, that's all of you. Okay, everybody watching the show, you guys are the cash flow investors. You want this as a as a monetary? No, I don't want to update the software. Hopefully that goes away. Uh, monetary investors, right? Everybody watching this show, you guys are trying to buy this particular house uh, to to earn cash flow, an investment vehicle, right? Okay, that's all you guys. Then the next type of buyer is going to be people who want to live there. This particular agent is more or less just marketing this house like they would market a house to people who want to live there. They're like, yo, here's the pictures. Here's what it looks like. Uh, if you want us to move out the tenant, they'd like to stay, but we'll move them out. And that's that. Horrible way to market the property because everybody that wants to live in this particular property is... Uh, not really going to be able to. They got a tenant in there. That's not how you sell a property and owner occupied, especially when it's kind of grimy and gross in there, right? Uh, so all the people that are interested in living in the house, they're not going to be interested in this. They're passing on this, right? Which leads back to you guys, right? My cash flow investors. But here's the best part. Uh, this agent doesn't even list the rent of the particular property. Reached out, haven't heard back yet. So they're they're not on top of their game knowing what investors like you, like me, need to know, which is good for us, right? So there's two kinds of people that can buy this house, and both of them are not being satiated by what they're seeing online, which is awesome. And I happen to run the largest scattered site portfolio of its kind in this market, right? We've sold $200 million worth of this stuff, right? So we happen to know what the market rates are. So what the current tenant's paying, it's not that relevant to me because they're out a month-to-month -month lease, so we'll slowly move move them up to get them to market rent. If we get them to market rent, they'll be paying 1075, y'all. That's 12,900 a year. After you factor in fixed variable expense estimates, my estimates of performance over the long haul properties like this, I anticipate you guys clearing a true cash flow of about 7 grand a year. Price, they're asking what? 55, 54, 9. I think I can get them down a little bit cuz again, I don't think they're, you know, putting their best foot forward to either type of buyer. So I think I can get them down to 50. If we pick it up at 50, you got a bank loan on this dude, you put in 12 and a half, bank kicks in the other 37 and a half. That's a 40% cash on cash return if we accomplish my goal of getting that tenant up to market rent without turning them over. Now, if we do have to turn the unit over, you saw the pictures, it didn't look hot. So we can't just throw a new tenant in there at 1075 with it looking like that. You probably got five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars to spruce that bad boy back up, but then you'll get a 1075 tenant, which is why, again, if the current tenant, say they're paying like 650, because I don't see why this particular seller don't look like a professional landlord, uh, would be at market rent. Uh, we wouldn't go immediately like 650 to 1075 because if you do that, oftentimes the tenant will just move out. You create an artificial turnover, and you saw the unit looks a little wonky. You don't want to redo that right now. 
Uh, you don't want to add in like another $8,000 bill to yourself, right? You want to collect the cash flow that's coming in. So you'd probably want to try to split the difference and get them up slowly. So if over a couple years you get them to that 1075, that's how you really cash in, right? Uh, turnovers, they're not your friend in this business. But low cost, cheap properties like this, if you have proven paying tenants in there, that's a bonus. Let's do what we can to keep them in there. And the numbers just make sense. So let me know what you want to do. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.